Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 341. I'm your host, Michael, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm with a love of my life today, Mary Lou. It's a rough start to the morning, sweetheart. It is. I didn't have any of it written down this morning. So, <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, what a day to be alive, huh? And we made it through February. Yay. Um, you know, February, I've always said, is one of the roughest months if you've ever been connected to the occult at all. And it uh, it was named after uh, Fabrius, which is a god associated with death and purification. And Rome would have that whole a whole month of making offerings and sacrifices to gods of death. And so that's where February came from. Isn't that wonderful that all these these months are named after all these gods and and then see you know, you wouldn't think about it, but spirits are loosed. Yeah. Well and, what I think what's interesting too, in the middle of all that, Rome put uh, Valentine's Day, which is a Roman holiday, right in the middle of the month of death. Well, that old Cupid's arrow may be more a death arrow than what people think it is. Uh, but uh, it again, there's there's part of the reason because we don't understand all how the pagan things that are around us and um, have been put right down our throats. Every um, death, everything that would come, would be in honor to these gods of the dead. Mm-hmm. And and you'd think well they they couldn't do anything like that yeah they can because it's it, because we have been made ignorant and therefore we're vulnerable to the attacks we don't know how to pray and stand against it and renounce it and um, you know I go through every month and ask forgiveness for this uh, the sins of the naming of that pagan month and then that that puts a blockade you know once you once you ask forgiveness for things that's that's the stop all to the kingdom of darkness, because that's what Jesus came to do. He came and provided the pathway to the breaking of all of these things that they can use against us. And they'll use it unless we know and we stand against it. It's like generational curses. Um, You know, of course Jesus paid the price for those curses to be broken. Absolutely. But you think that those those spirits aren't going to hang around and try to get around that? And they can get around it when we don't know to pray and, and to stand in our authority and say, you can't use this against our bloodline any longer. And, and we command you to go in Jesus' name. Of course, then you've got, you've got the whole process of having to pray over your DNA because all the people that you're related to, that you share DNA with, that are still sinning and, and keeping those doors open, then they try to attack through the DNA. But praise God, he's shown us how to pray and stop these attacks. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Baby. And we made it. Praise God, we made it without anything um, bad here and <laughs> going on in Seymour anyway. <laughs> Praise God. Um, there was a, a extremely important vote yesterday. I'm sure you guys have heard about it and we're praying about it too. Um, you know, the House had already passed um, the Women's Health Protection Act, and it's a law that would protect abortion rights even if Roe versus Wade is overturned. So see, they've been kind of trying to configure around the fact that there's a chance that Roe versus Wade could be turned around. And so the vote was in the Senate yesterday, and the Senate Republicans blocked the bill. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. It was one of the things I thought, if they don't block this thing, see, that puts us in a vulnerable position. You know, people can say all, all they want that there's, you know, we put too much emphasis on politics. It's not on a particular party. It's on the fact that these people can vote sin into law, and it makes the whole nation vulnerable to attack. Yeah. And unlike the Roman Empire, in America, it is a democratic republic where we have a voice mm-hmm. in the middle of all that. And if, if, if those that are walking with God do not lift their voices and make it heard, then it's our fault if a lot of this stuff gets passed. Well, it, the, look at what happened since Roe versus Wade was passed. Yeah. Look at what happened to the nation. Total downhill slide. 
And so there's no sense in somebody saying, you know, that it doesn't make a difference. The proof's in the pudding. Well, this last week, the uh, we're, we're hearing from the Dominican Republic that they're getting pressure from the State Department. If they, if they don't approve abortion, which they do not want, as well as the LGBTQ agenda, that they're going to be their their officials are going to be barred from ever traveling in the United States, and so these these things that the, the abortion is is an export product that once the Democrats got it into power, they're exporting it and trying to force nations. We're, we've heard this from Africa too, where bishops have come forth in Africa and saying, "Why are you forcing?" and withholding U.S. aid to us when we're an mm-hmm. ally with you over abortion when that's not even part of our relationship with you. You talk about an agenda being pushed by hell. Because this, this it's went even, even to the ultimate, in my opinion, where it's, it's uh, horrible enough that there's the death of, of infants in the womb. But they've made this like commodities. They have. They're making billions of dollars off of it. People are getting rich off of this. And it's it's so sickening. I mean, when you sit back and think about it, um, if Satan wanted to, to have a little plan that was going to wreak havoc, that was it, wasn't it? Well, Mary, they're trying to push it literally to the altars of Molech that there are, for the last 20 years, there have been ethicists pushing, saying that really the, the baby is not really cognitively developed until the age of two and so if you have any reason up to the age of two that you can have a post-birth abortion, they're pushing for this. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is some of the most heinous things that, uh, that is imaginable. It is. Just you couldn't, you couldn't believe that that would be in the minds of men. I mean, it just, it's so horrible. You can't fathom it. Um, but some good news is we're coming up to Purim. March 16th, the evening of March 16th, March 17th. And I know there's all the differences in the calendars. Um, you know, we've we've had a lot of questions about that because there are certain people say it's this calendar, this calendar, this calendar. This this person has the authority to say it's this calendar. And we, we prayed about this years ago when we looked at the um, Karaite calendar and we were looking at different things. People brought things up. And, you know, in a, in a nation where... Um, that doesn't keep the Friday night to Saturday night Sabbath, it's it's near impossible to take those high Sabbaths off because you have to give notice at work. Yeah, if you're living in Israel, the entire nation takes off, which makes but it... there's very few jobs that you don't have to give notice that you're going to take off days. Well, they're subject to change, so you, you might have to end up on that day and say, no, it's not this day, that. Well, that's not going to go over well when it, where a person works. So we prayed, and we had peace with just following the regular Israeli calendar. And I know a lot of people may not agree with that, and, and that's up to you. What you guys want to do is up to you. But what what we felt peace with when we prayed was just following that regular calendar, and that way people have a set date. You know, in my opinion, if we get within the, the season of it, and I think God's mercy covers it, and, yeah. and I don't think we would have had peace with it at all because, I mean, I didn't care what God wanted, I would have done, but I, I just felt like it was put going to put unnecessary burdens, and you don't want to take away from the joy of the feast. Well, absolutely, and then, you know, you and I both know because I constantly get emails, whatever version of the calendar, people will defend those almost mm-hmm. to the place of ad nauseum. But, um, you know, if, if you're in a place where your family can, can do that and, and you can take off and, and that's what you're doing, God bless you. Uh, we're, we're not going to fight you over that. Uh, no, we're just going to do it this way here. It's the same and way. And God has always anointed it. The Holy Spirit has yeah, always come in. That's true. Power. And and that's what I was looking for. You know, if you have the peace of God and the presence of God comes, then then you know that you're in an okay zone. And believe me, I don't want to get in an un-okay zone because that's when you get, you're vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. And God has corrected us enough that if we knew that the, the peace of God was being taken away or yeah, something we, was wrong, we, we would have changed. Um but the reason I said that is Purim. Some people say Purim. Some people say Purim. So it's the difference between Hebrew and English, baby. Um, but anyway, uh, during that season, there's always a time of God moving miraculously and in unexpected ways to protect his people. And so as this um, situation is escalating over in the Ukraine, this is really a good time for us to stand upon that seasonal anointing that is there and ask God to protect his people. And we've we've got emails from people that have contacts with Christians in Ukraine that have really had miraculous things happen. 
Oh, they have. Let me read a couple of them. And, and these I thought were really significant. This is from a pastor over there. It said, uh, please tell your people because of your prayers, God really fights our battles. The rockets disappear in air without reaching our homes, and no one knows where they where they go. Uh, enemies' tanks run out of fuel. Russian troops get lost and ask our locals for food and, and for directions. That is definitely God because we are dealing with the second strongest army in the world. And then from a Ukrainian soldier, we feel your prayer support. Sometimes something really inexplicable happens as if someone's invisible hand uh, really takes the bullets and shells away from us, and uh, they fly pa- or they fly past us. Uh, we emerge victorious from very difficult situations, as if someone is accompanying us. We become invisible to the enemy. We ourselves see even in complete darkness, and we know what to do and how to do it. It inspires us and, and gives us strength. We believe that Jesus, that the Lord Jesus himself is for Ukraine. And guys, I need to stop there. You know, there's there's Christians on both sides of this conflict. It's just like in America. You can have an evil government, but you end up yeah. with, with Christians end up in, in the military. And uh, at the same time, there is there is massive damage. People are losing homes. Yeah, there's cities being leveled. And, uh, you know, we have uh, we have seen... Uh, some memes on the on the internet, which you know, there's nothing really happened. This this is a false flag, and people confuse false flags. False flags means that this thing is being orchestrated, that it's really happening. There are, there are there's a council somewhere that said we're going to have Russia invade, and they're ever then they're, they're they're moving around chess pieces. But guys, the pawns, the the people that aren't the elite, are the ones caught in the crossfire, and there are mm-hmm. people dying, and there are there are their homes and their livelihoods are being destroyed. And there's nothing funny mm-hmm. about any of this. No, and I, I think sometimes the uh, some of these memes where we're trying to say, okay, yeah, this, this this may be done by a council somewhere, but people are really losing their lives. Families are being separated. And, and it needs our prayer. And it needs our prayers, not showing that we're heartless people, which sometimes we, if we're not careful, uh, we, we can appear to be that way, and that should never be that way well, in the body I, of Christ. You know, I, I have a hard time putting stock in what I hear on the regular news. Oh, yeah. And it's obvious, absolutely obvious, that this war was being pushed before it was even being established. It really was. Oh, NATO and the media were fanning the flames and, and, before it. And our president was. And they were actually trying to do, do it during the entire Trump administration, and Trump wouldn't, wouldn't bite. You know, this, um, this situation with Ukraine, I don't think that we know all the truth either. Oh, no, not near. I mean, there's, there's so many levels of things that, that you hear. Um, years ago, and and this has been proven to me, years ago, um, when they were preparing the programmed multiples, Mike, they had a whole generation of program multiples that had personalities placed in them to be loyal to Russia mm-hmm. for a planned invasion. Yeah, I believe it was the invasion that Henry Groover saw with in the vision. Bit. Yeah, with the uh, the submarines attacking, there was nuclear war, and then um, he even saw. And I've mentioned this before. I, I've got a reason I'm saying it again, guys. Uh, Alexander Lebed, he saw his picture of the general that would would lead it. Well, you know, people started praying, and in April of 2002, Lebed was um, killed in a helicopter crash. And there's some speculation that that was um, not an accident. Uh, but nevertheless, Alexander Lebed was a key player in Russia uh, under both President Yeltsin and Vladimir Putin. And so, in my opinion, there is no way that Putin is not aware of the program multiples. Mm-hmm. Now, I am absolutely convinced of this that the prayer, since this was unveiled, has totally taken down the power of the, that controlled those personalities that would have been Russian allegiant. Totally taken it down. So it puts things in a different perspective. Um, you know, Putin was in the KGB, so we know what kind of training he's had. I don't know that much about the Ukrainian president, but I don't think it's beyond... Um, belief 
that our president would would try to foment war to even cover up evidence in Ukraine. There's oh. so, there's too many ties. It, it, they are right about this when they say Illuminati and all these plans. This this is a planned thing. Well, I was I was talking to one of my colleagues here a few days ago, and I said I I think this war will last long enough to where they ensure that all the evidence against Biden is destroyed by the warfare. Uh, there's there's a lot going on, Mary. When you know when you're dealing with program multiples. Uh, Russ has run into him. We've run into him that, you know, so you had some that were Russian loyalists mm-hmm. and some of their deepest parts, their deepest programming, they were Nazis and well, they fluent in German. And, and you could tell even from the front host part that there was no allegiance to the United States. Don't know. They didn't. They, didn't. They, were, they were created to be what I'd call a world soldier. You know, I remember when they started uh, the coming the out with the, you know, I've always got, got the kids like, military stuff <laughs> i believe in getting boys boy toys and girls girl toys uh and i don't mean that in a bad way like some people say boy toys i'm talking about play things you know um you go to the store and buy a toy <laughs> real toys in the toy section of you know the like store, yeah. play play guns for boys and little dolls for girls um i just think that that's that's part of of reinforcing how god made and there, I'll probably get a lot of backlash off that. But I'm telling you, by what we did, I remember when there were um, a generation below me started letting their sons get Barbie dolls and things like that. And I'm telling you, it was all part of this Masonic-led, um, the, the Masonic spirits that were trying to make transgender and mm-hmm. trying to have both sexes. You know, it's with their, their Baphomet and all that crazy stuff. And so I noticed as I was, because I'd always look for like Jeeps and, and things like that and helicopters. And, and I noticed they, they went from having like U.S. Army on them and things like that to world soldiers. And I thought, uh-oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is like preparing everybody to be U.N. troops or something. Um, so all, the reason I, I'm saying this about, about the program multiples is most people didn't even know that they existed. Yet God raised up people like Russ Dizdar, people all over the place, to pray this down. Yes. Now, can you imagine Putin, if he's knowledgeable of this, which I believe he is, can you imagine him see that plan fall to pieces? That people that they had with a one phone call could have triggered that personality up and had a soldier to do a mission for them, see it fall to pieces? Yeah, because both sides... Had these soldiers, both that's, sides. That's that's why they did it here, is is they had to match what was going on Over there. in other other countries. Yeah, um, and so God wants our prayers to make a difference, and and what I hear a lot of is that well, here we go, World War Three. This is the end. This is just, and it's it's like it's just set in stone, like like that that there's no variance, and there's a lot of of variance. It, can you find in the Bible that there would be people that would get split in pieces by trauma and, and be uh, programmed to be super soldiers? You can't find that, can you? But no. it's there. And historically, it was there all the way back. Uh, you know, the technology that the Nazis used that we and the Russians got a hold of for MK Ultra and stuff. Mary, we traced that back in our research all the way back to ancient Egypt. So, so this stuff's been going on, yeah. but has, has the church known about it? No. no. Most of the church doesn't know about it right now. They really don't. I think it would flabbergast them. I think it would scare them if they found it out. And they, they would probably just say, oh, that's just conspiracy theory. They wouldn't want to look at it. I tell you what, over the years, though, I've heard from a lot of pastors that once they get a hold of this, they thought, now I know what destroyed my church. Mm-hmm. Now I know why yeah. we had so much problems. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because who would think about that? Yeah. Who would think about somebody coming in there that is a Trojan horse that could have a personality highly trained in witchcraft, uh, demon trained, and with information to know inside information about pastors and that nobody else knew? Uh, Russ even talked about one that was pretty well known. That was that was a multiple. That was a raving Satanist, and in the, in the back mm-hmm. was his main part. 
Yeah, so, um, so most of the church doesn't even know about this stuff. But the truth of it is is that God can raise people up to pray about things that are unknown about. And you know what? There could be Christians all over the place baptizing the Holy Spirit that are praying in the Spirit, don't know what they're praying, but they're praying about this. <laughs> you know, well, I, I've, heard, I've heard from people that once they, you know, they ran across some of our podcasts where we mentioned it, and they said, you know, for, for decades, the Holy Spirit has been having me uh, pray for the healing of shattered minds, and I had no idea what that was. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like maybe the, maybe they just went through like a car accident or something like mm-hmm. that. And you know, it's it's like God told me to pray, and I'm praying. I had no idea what I was praying about. Mary, when you put that across the body of Christ, where when with those believers that are so faithful that they'll pray things because the Holy Spirit told them to pray it when they don't even understand it, Mary. That's right. What wonderful, powerful yeah. things can the Holy Spirit release across the planet because of his faithful and servants? And only because of the magnificence of Almighty God. Yes. You know, when, when I was praying about the, uh, the podcast, what kept coming to me is, is the, the light of God overcomes the darkness. The light of God. And uh, the main scripture that came, came to me, and I'll, I'll read it last. I wanted to just go through some scriptures about the light of God real quick. Isaiah 61 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Well, see, that one's extremely significant, Mary, because the verses before it talk about how gross darkness has covered mm-hmm. the earth, not like the earth has ever seen before. And so in the, in the heat of the worst time of the tribulation period, God's light can yeah, shine through his that's people, exactly which is right. so powerful. That's right. Psalm eighty nineteen says, Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Mm-hmm. Isn't that great? Luke 12, 3 says, Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. There is nothing, no thing said, nothing done, that Almighty God hasn't seen. And his light can expose the hidden secret schemes of the enemy, much to their consternation, I'm sure, because they can't see everything. You know, they have to use a communication system, mm-hmm. you know, demon to demon. Uh, they, they, they aren't all knowing. They aren't all seeing. But Almighty God is. So whose side would you rather be on? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Daniel 2.22 he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Not with anything else, with him. First John 1 John 1.5 This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. First John 1 John 1.7 But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us, cleanseth us from all sin. I can say it. Um, First Peter two nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal <clears throat> priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. There's only one marvelous light. That's right. And that's with Jesus. And the main verse that that uh, God took me to was John one five. It says, "And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not." See, see what's going on with this, this. In this war, you say, well, God, where are you? Where are you? Every darkness is everywhere. Uh, where are you, God? He's the light behind that darkness, pushing it forward to be dealt with. Ask these believers over there that they're, they're witnessing missiles disappearing in mm-hmm. midair and never hitting their target. You know, years ago when um, I was just getting hold of our Hebraic heritage and everything, and I was reading different rabbis, one, he was studying the account here in Genesis of 1, 2, and 3, and and he was just meditating on the difference between the sun and the moon, and he said, you know, that he goes, you know, the sun can represent God; that all light comes from God. And he said, he said, I discovered myself in the moon, and that all I can do is reflect God's light. And he said, I discovered myself in the moon, and that he says, there's the waning and the waxing. He said, there are times in my life where. I'm not really aligned with God the way that I should be, and his light is dimmed in me. But and he said that he said there's even times in my life that I was so unaligned with God that there was no light at all. But he said, I have set my heart 
to where I'm going to align myself with God so that his full light can shine from me like what we would call a full yeah, moon. Yeah, that's it. And I, I think that's the task right now for the remnant is mm-hmm. to so align ourselves with God that his light is reflected in us, that we're, we are called to be imagers of God. We're created in his image. We were made to reflect his love, to reflect his light, to reflect his power. Now, light does something very specific in uh, in Genesis, and I, always, I, I, always, I like to go back to Genesis because the principle of first mention is that when you see things that were first mentioned, it, uh, it, it, sh- it, it begins developing the character of things, okay, and it begins to reveal God's character. And what's interesting is God created light before he created the sun, moon, and stars, okay? That's a, the fourth day principle. But on the first day, God said, let there be light, and light was. Now, he saw that the light was good. God never said the darkness was good. He, he declared the light good, and God does what he always does. He begins separating the light or the good from the darkness That's it. bad. That's it. And when we position ourselves... To where his light can shine through us, the light always dispels the darkness, but only then can God's truth be manifested because if we, if we become imagers of God, okay, to where his light is shining through us, that is what causes within society the lies to be revealed so they can be separated and set over here as darkness. The only way to change D.C., the only way to change wherever the, the Canadian government is, where uh, I forgot what, what city uh, uh, starts with an O, Ottawa, maybe? In Canada? In Canada. Yeah. Uh, the only way to change that is the body of Christ. We, ha- we have got to seek the face of God. And one of the things I think in, in, in 2022, there is a major shift that God's going to have to change the way that we think and the way that we align ourselves because we're, we're kind of like that waxing or waning moon. One of the reasons why darkness is taking over is that we're not shining the way that we're supposed to and god is calling us to realign so that he can shine through us fully and Mm -hmm. when he does it will reveal and dispel the darkness that is going on in the earth today that's right you know in in the midst of february every year it's i feel the pressure i feel the the yuck of it and and i was able to break it before the end of february this year i just thought you know what God's bigger in me than whatever this junk is, and I just kept pressing, and I kept pressing, and, and it broke through. Um, but, I mean, this stuff is heavy, guys. It is nothing to, to mess around with. And so, but the, the good news is, is the light in us, when you're saved and your, your spirit is renewed, it can flow through even the yucky parts of our soul, you know, we, we fight our flesh all the time, but man, if we just say, God, let your light just burst through, fill every place in me. You know, I bow my knee to you in every place in my heart, every place in my soul. Let your light shine there, the one true light of Almighty God that can burst through any darkness. Yeah. You know, that was a lot of how I approached my healing. Um, I, w- I wasn't digging. I started having memories, but I wasn't digging for them. I wasn't digging for him. I was just saying, God, you know everything that's there. Bust through every gate. Get the light of Jesus in there. Show me anything I need to repent of. Show me what to do, and let's get this thing settled. You know, I was I was thinking the other day. Uh, have you ever, you know, had a uh, you were hurt where you were kind of like drugged through gravel, or you, you know, as a kid, you know, you'll skin the stuff. Yeah, and, sliding and you, through gravel alert. <laughs> yeah, alert. And you, you get sand, all this stuff. And in fact, there's a um, somebody that's went through an accident like that. They have something, I think it's called abrasion therapy, where they got to go in and, and scrub to get all that stuff out. Our soul is like that, that there have been things in our past that the enemy has drug our soul through gravel, and that embedded gravel becomes the strongholds. And, but the only way to repair that is allow the Holy Spirit to do abrasion therapy that he's got to wash it and with the, with the water of the word. And we've got to allow him to rub those areas to work those things out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes uh, we know it may, it may drudge up feelings that we don't want to deal with, but you know, if, if the reality is 
we're constantly dealing with those feelings. We suppress them, they pop up. We suppress them, they pop up. We suppress them, they pop up. If we would just let him take a hold of those, the only reason he's messing with them is to get rid of them. Yeah, that's right. That's that's what he does like like a lot of times. Now, God doesn't come with condemnation. That's always going to come from the enemy. But if you just have something just repeatedly keeps bubbling up and bubbling up, there's something not yeah. taken care of. And I, I remember years ago, I uh, remember when we we had that old building in, in Dixon, and I was trying to open the window. I ended up putting my hand through the window, mm-hmm. and I I had cut a uh, place on my arm when I went to the hospital to stitch it up. The first thing they did, Mary, because they actually had to do kind of abrasion therapy to make sure there weren't any little shards of glass there, they got this big spotlight and turned on it to where there was no place for a shadow, no place for darkness, to where they could see if there was any uh, of, of that glass in there at all. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Yeah. And then, and then they, 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 they took their stuff and, and did abrasion therapy and then made sure before they sewed everything up. But that's the only way to be truly healed. Yeah, you have to get the junk out first. Because the last thing we want, could you imagine being on the edge of God moving and really doing something that is just so beautiful and so phenomenal that I have, that I have something in my past that I have not let God really deal with? Right as I get on the edge of victory, that thing pops up and sabotages and, and robs me of my victory. Mm, boy, and and be... the truth is, all of us have experienced that over and over and over again. And what the Holy Spirit is saying, this is the time to get free because I am going to use every single person that I can use all around the world for the time that we're in. God wants 100% body active Mm -hmm. to where we are free from the past so that we can be released to do our future in God to where he changes the way that we think so that no matter uh, how the devil pushes us, he gets a kingdom reaction because kingdom reaction brings kingdom power, kingdom influence, mm-hmm. uh, kingdom anointing, kingdom healing, kingdom miracles. And, and Barry, he wants all of us to be in that position to where when, when the push comes to shove, that we have been restored and that we can be on the, on the front line holding the line for God and, and so aligned with him that Oh, I want I want Jesus. Now it talks about that uh, Jesus in Revelation, the light that comes from His face. I want it to be so reflected in mind that it's blinding to the devil, mm-hmm. and it causes agony for him to look at my life because all he can see is Jesus. That's where all of us need to get, and we just need to let the Holy Spirit bring the light, so that He can do what He needs to do to set us free. And then it, it, with each with each step, it, it brings us to the place where we're like the moon that we're getting. Every step that he takes, he's moving us more into that position to where Jesus can fully shine through us. Yeah, that's right. Can you imagine the darkness that, at the beginning in Genesis when God said, light be? Can you, can you imagine? Yeah. yeah, the darkness comprehended it not, all right. <laughs> and what kind of darkness was it that it fled before the sun, the moon, the stars? You see, there's a, there's a light beyond physical light that God creates, it's the light of the kingdom mm-hmm. that he was speaking. And the only way to overcome what happened between Genesis 1 and 1, 2 is God had to create a force called spiritual light that would push back the darkness, that would allow him to separate darkness from light. And he's wanting to do that right now. He's wanting yeah. to do that. Yeah, he's pushing, uh, he's pushing the darkness forward. The light is compelling it to come forward. It's it's running from the light. Yeah. The, and, and if you look at what's happened and how much it's been exposed, doesn't it look like it's just running? It's running from the light of Jesus that is exposing it. I tell you what, if the light of truth ever really hit D.C. and a lot of their, a lot of the areas where they have their influence, they would be running like roaches. If we really knew what was going on in the State Department and in intelligence and what's going on behind closed doors and in Congress and in the, in the bureaucracy— well, a lot of it is coming forward. Yeah. Look at what they found out in this Russiagate thing with the FBI. And if it can come forward there in the pagan environment they're in, you know, I pray over congressmen and all the time. They are walking into the midst of hell up there just by the way it's laid out. Oh, it's the a, portals it's a, open. The, it's a satanic uh, it birthing is. engine. And so, I mean, they got to be, you know, I get a kick out of that Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> 
because she just is a tough little gal. And you'd have to be up in that environment. You'd have to be tough to make it. But this is why I think we we need to keep praying, guys, and keep praying that, that people that fear the Lord are going to get in there in this uh, midterm election. We're, we're not done here. I know people think, okay, any minute there's going to be a nuclear war. And, boy, it's been set up that way. Man, have I ever seen buttons get pushed in my life to do that. Um, but I, I really believe this can be a regional war right now. I do, too. I believe it can be a regional war. I believe that that things can happen to squelch this this war. I think our prayers are so significant right now because we got to look at the um, – the long haul for God. What's God interested in? Souls. Yeah. The most souls that can be saved. The most people that can be freed. His people are in bondage right now. Uh, you know, he doesn't want his people in bondage. We're supposed to be getting prepared to be a bride without spot or wrinkle. And we look like a crumpled up piece of old coal. We do. And, you know, when, when you were seeking the face of God and God told you it was going to be regional, I was praying and God was saying, he said, because I'm thinking, okay, now there, there are some believe that uh, Russia is a part of the Gog Magog war and there's others that say, no, it, it needs to go with a different, uh, different nation. But so I'm, I'm asking God, is this the beginning of the Gog Magog war? And, and what I got was he said, no, but it's setting the foundation for a future war. Well, and it's just like right now we're seeing how easily they can put in the mark of the beast. Yeah. I mean, you know, years ago people were just kind of um, confused about how in the world would you have a mark in your forehead? Your How in the world could you? Well, now it's easy to see, and it's easy to see how quickly they could institute it. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't buy food if you don't do this. You know, you got to take this vaccine. You got. Of course, you know, Microsoft has developed the invisible tattoo. Mm-hmm. So that you can only see it under a certain right. light or be electronically but, uh, but scanned. But I don't believe it's time yet. No, it's, it's getting... It's God showing. And you know what? When God shows things like this, it's so that it can, can get the attention of people that maybe don't even believe in God right now, but they remember this praying grandma that everybody thought was weird, and she talked about this mark of the beast. Yeah. See, see, that can get people attention. And what God's in wanting to do right now is he's wanting to bring the evil forward so it can be judged. It needs to be seen just like in a court of law. Well, because I, once it's yep. seen and the public sees it and there's confirmation, yes, these evil people did this, then there can be justice. You know, I saw a statistic the other day I thought was fascinating. You remember the, the run on the toilet paper and the paper towels and all that? There was one that the news never covered, Mary, is that all of a sudden in the middle of the pandemic, all of the Bibles disappeared off the shelf because there was a generation waking up saying, I remember what grandma said. And that's And true. you could not find a Bible at a Walmart or anything anywhere. And I tell you what is going to be some justice is all of these children that have been under a totally secular, demonic um, schooling, educational system totally taken over by the kingdom of darkness, they're going to rise up out of that and be the greatest army that yeah. God's ever had. They, they may have been pushed down and lied to and deceived and told that they're a little girl when they're a little boy and a little boy when they're a little girl. You watch them rise up out of this. You watch God prepare them and rise them up as the mightiest army that this world has ever seen for the Lord. Yeah. And and what we need to be praying against right now, and I, I saw this... Um, I was going up the interstate the other day, and I was coming up to, you know, like an overpass, and then the, the yield lane was coming down. And I wasn't anywhere near it, but this woman came down, and I was right beside her by the time she got down there. And I was just planning on just speeding up a little bit and letting her have and, – and I looked over, and she was in one of those uh, jihads or what are those things that the Muslim women wear? I mean, it was apparent that's what it was. She hit the gas and, and got around me, and when – I bet you she was going 120 miles an hour. I've never seen it. And so it just – it put my mind in a place where God could speak to me at that moment, and he said, what you need to be praying for is people that are already here that are set to, to do a false flag and blame it on Russia. Yeah. That yeah. are set here to do things, they're going to blame it on Russia, and then try to try to go ahead and get this war going. This is not God's will. No, it's, it's not. not time for for what everybody thinks it's time for. It's time for God to raise His people up, shake hell off of them, prepare an army, and let's do let's do an end time war, a, a spiritual war. 
Let's yes. do an end time war for souls and get soul saving and get, get the Christians freed. Every place I look, there's Christians in worse shape than the world. That's why we need to move a God in the church to cleanse and restore the church so that they're, uh, you know, if you have a, um, a, you know, it's like have, let's say, let's just use COVID. Okay, you have a COVID war, ward and you have this people full of infection and everything else. The last thing you do is put a newborn baby in the middle of a COVID yeah. war. And uh, guys, we need the church healed and restored and mm-hmm. in the strength of God, moving in the power of God, so that when these new babies come in the kingdom, they're not made sick by the stuff that's going on in the church, but instead they're nurtured and, and strengthened and trained in how to walk with God. That's it. That's why the conference center's there. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it, it wouldn't take a whole lot to, to get a building ready and just feed people. And, and I'm sure at the end of all this, that's what that building will be. That building will be set up however God wants it and whatever he builds there to feed people, to shelter people, whatever's needed. But for right now, there's too much of the, the body of Christ in deep trouble. Yeah, we need, we need to feed them spiritually from the Word yeah, of God. Yeah, that's what God's wanting right now. It's, it's restoration time before the end time. He's letting us all see how easy it's going to happen. He's letting us see how easy this stuff could unfold to get the attention of the peoples that, that doubt the Bible even. Did you know a lot of people that are going to church doubt the Bible? A lot of ministers I, doubt the Bible. I sat in the hospital waiting room uh, when we had some folks we know that were sick and sitting there and had a man try to convince me that, that the Bible wasn't true, that all those stories in the Old Testament were uh, just, you know, just fables and stuff. So I had to explain to him what I came out of. And, and I had to explain to him that it was the faith I had that that word was true, that everything that happened in it was true, that got me out of this, that gave me the faith to, to believe that God could outdo what, even what I was in because it took fighting some giants. Yeah. And so, so there's a lot of people don't believe the Bible's true. There's a lot of people don't believe. I, I can tell you there's a lot of people probably like me. Years ago, I thought there was no help for me. I thought, look how, how many years I've tried. Look how many years I've prayed. Look how many uh, times I went to the altar and cried out and said, God, can you do something with me? I'm a mess. I'm depressed. I can't even hardly get out of the bed in the morning. I have to make myself. I thought I was a lost cause. And I finally said the right prayer. <laughs> finally said the right one. It was for you and the girls. I prayed for your sake, not for mine. And, and the reason that was so significant is the Antichrist spirit was what held my programming together. Well, the Antichrist spirit was a lot of what was going on in the church because of the hyper-prosperity message yeah, and everything that's else. We were being taught it. Yeah. And so it busted hell open and started the road to my healing. And because that's just, that's the spirit of Jesus is selflessness. Exactly. And, and you know, the kingdom of darkness can't deal with that, can they? Just like they can't deal with, with the love of God. They can't deal with mercy. They can't deal with grace. It's beyond their comprehension. Oh, absolutely. And so what, what we're looking at is, is a time of great disruption, great shaking. And, we, you know, even if this is a regional war, if, if this is a regional war, we're still going to have great consequences that you need to prepare for. There's going to be a great increase in the cost of food and shortages. There's going to be, we already see the gas going through the roof. So it's a time to seek the wisdom of God on what do I do with what I have. Exactly. And it's a time of looking at maybe not buying a particular item that you don't have. You know, we spent a lifetime of doing that at different parts in our lives because we didn't have it. But but now there's it's a time of... Thinking ahead, thinking about, you know, what if there's a shortage? Mm-hmm. What are long term items you can you can you know, if you get if you get something that you're gonna put in the freezer, it's just gonna last so long. But if you if you get like these long term items like dried beans, dried rice, you know, you've got something that's got a long term storage. That's things if you're gonna buy extra, buy things you can do that. Buy salt, buy things that that are going to make that taste better because I, I'm telling you, I've tasted beans without salt and rice without salt. Not yeah. so great. You want to have some oil, you know, it, there's a, yeah. um, well, we, you know, we had a friend that kind of looked at, you know, buying all this freeze dried stuff. And when you start really getting it in mass, he actually found it was cheaper. It was a little bit more expensive up front, but he bought his own freeze dryer. Mm-hmm. And that way that uh, when, he is a prepper extraordinaire too. 
I tell you, and then so everything came out of the garden. So much of it got freeze dried. I think, I think they freeze dried everything but socks. You know, <laughs> they're. I'm telling you, they that family, Randy and Robin, are going to be key in showing people how to do this in yeah. the times. For in a lot of reasons, a lot of ways, not just the food, but um, we're. I consider it such a privilege that God brought them our way. I do. They are a blessing to us. And uh, God, if, that's another thing I've noticed. You know, I had uh, some people that we just love that visited us not too long ago. Um, sorry, we can't visit with everybody that asks. I'm guys, we just don't have time. But when we can fit it in, we do. And we had uh, a couple stop by that we just love, and she knows how to can anything and all kinds of of things. You know, in prep. And I thought, well, I know how to do the water bath. You know, I've made the the pickles, I've made the salsa and apple butter stuff, but I don't know how to can like with the big pressure cookers, the meat and things like that. So I, I can see God bringing people together that four down the road, we're going to need it. We, the center may have classes on how to can stuff properly. Well, well, in right proper now, ways that, we have a lot of homesteaders that could probably share a lot of great insights. You know, right now, this is the way I looked at the conference center. Right now we can do the things that are going to make it easier. We're going to put the, the big, um, you know, first I thought, well, we'll just use a regular dishwasher because I'm going to use all paper products. When you feed that many people, it's just almost impossible, you know. And so I was going to, and then as the shortages showed up, I thought, hmm, I better get one of those big dishwashers, like, a, you know, the quality that a restaurant would have, and buy, you know, glass plates. Yeah, like, the ones that you can wash a ten thousand times, and then and then if it gets to a place that we don't have a dishwasher, that we don't have electric, I can wash them by hand. I, I mean, I'm having to think backwards. That's the way that God's always put this in my head from the beginning of telling me judgment was coming, is take advantage of every convenience we have right now and the easiest way it can be. But think think in the future of okay, at the very edge of this, we may have to just burn wood. At the very edge of this, we may have to pump water. I, and so, but I'm starting now, you know, with the conveniences because we're going to need it. Well, because between now and then, I'm looking for God to reveal witty at, inventions. At some <laughs> point, I may just be mostly feeding people. But at this point, it's I'm feeding people in the most convenient way because I know I'm going to pray with people. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I know the vision God's given us. You, you can't you can't run a kitchen and and try to feed 200 people and be praying for them at the same time no, it's not going to work no so right now it's going to be a convenient way I've got it already laid out in my mind how how I can do it but eventually it's going to take more effort because I'm probably going to have to hand wash dishes you see what I'm saying guys at some point before Jesus comes back it's probably going to get rough but I don't believe we're there yet what we're seeing is God shove everything to the forefront through this thing in Russia and Ukraine you're going to find out who the players are just like we're finding it out here in America do we know what's sitting in the White House really good chance most people do by now mm-hmm. <laughs> are we going to know what's in Russia what's in Ukraine what's in NATO yeah I think we are I think God is revealing everything that's going to be revealed. I, I think that that's why he's calling us to realign so that we can we can not only walk in the light, but that we can be a reflection of his light, which means that everywhere we go, we become revealers of darkness, that we reveal mm-hmm. when darkness is there. Yeah, that's it. Which is what we're supposed to be. That, that's right. You know, how can, I remember there was a story uh, uh, I used to love to read, you know, stories of Smith Wigglesworth and John G. Lake and all that. And and uh, Smith Wigglesworth one day got on a train, and he was kind of, you know, really just praying about who's getting ready to go to a meeting. And so he was sitting there just reading his Bible, just praying and thanking to himself. And this guy across from him just keeps fidgeting and fidgeting and fidgeting. And finally the guy cries out and says, he says, you need to do something. He says, I can't stand it anymore. He said, ever since you come in there, he says, I know I'm a sinner and I need God. <laughs> and and it, it, it was the light of God mm-hmm. just simply That's shining it. through Smith. He didn't even have to say a word. He was sitting there praying about what to preach when he went to this meeting and just spending time in the word. But the, the, the light of God shining through him was revealing the darkness. That's it. That's in that what man. The- the light is behind all this stuff going on, Mike. It's it's pushing the darkness forward. And it looks like all we see is darkness. Yes. But it's because the light's behind pushing it, pushing it. 
And that's what, you know, the, the number one thing we need to be right now that will cause the light to shine through us is we have to hate evil. We, we should be hating everything that we see that has an evil foundation. To love God is to hate That's right. evil. You, you know, when I hear about little kids getting abused and, and I, hatred, hatred for that. I hate it. I don't hate the people because a, a lot of times those abusers are tormented children themselves that have grown up. But I hate the demonic power that pushes this stuff. Yeah, I hate war. I, I hate it. I hate war. When I hear those little babies crying, I can't hardly really stand it. I, yeah. But there's but there's help. Look at that, though. I do believe that there's help going going to them. And that's that's the one thing that I gives me hope for humanity. They will pour out to try to help and, and get supplies and things. And that's that's what we can do right now is let's give to reputable places that we know are going to help and support in this. Let's pray for every soul. Let's pray for peace. Let's pray for salvation. Yes. And for God to so manifest himself on the battlefield that both sides have got to stop and think. Yes. And, and see that what... Our, thank you, Carol, for sending us those testimonies. We appreciate it so much, and that's what we need. We need to have testimonies of what people have seen because that will get everybody's attention. Yeah. See, that's that gives me hope that God's getting ready to do what he told me he's going to do, supernaturally do things to where everybody sees it. There will be no doubt who's who does these things. Everybody's going to drop to their knees and say, this has to be a holy God. Yes, and that he's manifesting himself no matter the weird stuff the enemy tries to come up with and what what the leaders of the world. You know, one of the things I'm getting ready to do, and I'm, I'm kind of preparing for the uh, Ohio Conference uh, that's going to be in July, is I'm systematically going through the book of Psalms and, and putting together everything it's, it, the Psalms says about warf, spiritual warfare because it's all in there. That's yeah, full of it. And the first one right out of the chute in – Psalms 2 is the declaration, leaders of the world, you better kiss Jesus before he gets angry. You're, you're planning against him, and the word warns you, you better not do it. Yeah. You better turn to him instead of plotting against him. And that's something that I begin to pray daily and declare is that the leaders of this world will find Christ. Mm -hmm. No matter how deep in darkness they are, they're going to find Christ. Mary, throughout history, throughout since since the since Jesus gave his life for us on the cross and, and resurrected victorious over death, hell, and the grave, some of the darkest, most evil men of their generations have found Christ and become great leaders in the body of Christ. That no matter how deep in darkness they were, the cross was enough. Mm-hmm. And Mary, it's the same today. It's the same, same power. It's the same today. Same power. His love is just as great. And Father, right now we pray for every leader of the world. Father, we ask that your light would come, that you would reveal the darkness in their hearts, that you would reveal the darkness in their plans and let them see it and let those around them see it so they could be brought to repentance. And Father, we declare in the name of Jesus, this is a season that you can make up with a son that you can kiss the son before he gets angry because his anger is being kindled in this very hour. Get right with God. Get right with Jesus. Quit planning and fighting against him. And Father, we just ask that your supernatural power will be released yes. upon the body of Christ wherever they are on the yes. earth. Yes. Father, align us so with Jesus that the glory that shines from his face will begin shining from his people and it will cause darkness to be revealed and be defeated around the world. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Kerr, co-founder of Hear the Watchman. And I'd like to join in with Dr. Michael Lake in inviting you to come out to Grapevine, Texas, March 17th through the 20th, for our Eyes to See conference. It is the first time that we've been able to gather together again and worship and learn and just be blessed by the speakers who are, who are going to be there to share with you. Those would be none other than Dr. Michael Lake, Jamie Walden. 
Pastor Paul Bagley, Derek Gilbert, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Dave Hodges, Thomas Dunn, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, Ohio Brett, John and Chelsea Jubilee, and yours truly, Mike and Jeannie Kerr. So get out and get involved. Come out and let's gather again and fellowship and pray together. There's nothing like it. Please go to www.hearthewatchmenmen.com and sign up today. We have discounted hotel rooms available. It's just a wonderful experience. And use the promotional code LAKE20 and save $20 off the price of your ticket to attend the conference. We'll see you all in Grapevine, Texas. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you.